Welcome to the Buzz on 82, the only show with a Down Valley view. I'm your host, Lynn Alia. I am thrilled to be here today. Um, we have a fantastic show for you. Later on, we have Summers Moore, brilliant photographer. But first, with us in the studio is Patrick Liberty of Accomplice, co-owner, uh, founder of Accomplice. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Well, thank you. Love to be here, Lynn. Yay, thank you. We also got an exciting guy hanging behind there, my brother who started it with us. So, uh, oh, we have a surprise guest? Surprise guest, man. Oh, but let's welcome our artist, surprise guest. Artist and designer for Accomplice. Woo. Doesn't do interviews normally. He doesn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, wait, so they go. Lynn, fantastic to see you again. <laughs> So good to see you too. I haven't seen you since we caught up uh, in France at the Cannes Film Festival. That's there. right. We we did we did that special workshop with Leonardo DiCaprio. That's right, and yeah. we all did Quin Con Quin Qigong Qigong together. Yeah, Shenzhen Qigong. Yes. So thank you. So from Cannes all the way to Aspen, two local boys gone international. Super, super huge. You guys were born in Glenwood Springs, and now you are international clothing designers with this phenomenal company called Accomplice, <laughs> as I pick this up. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So what do you want to talk no, about today, Lynn? So much. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much to talk about because you guys, you, all right, let's just start at the very beginning. So you were born in Glenwood Springs, mm -hmm. brothers. Brothers by birth, but bro at birth. Brothers by birth, not yeah. just like brothers. Yeah. We'll get to that part later. Yeah, because you're like my sister. That's you know? <laughs> <laughs> my brother. The uh, like we're like. It's an ER brother. ER, and yeah. I'm like an A. Yeah, you're an A. Okay, so. A apostrophe. A apostrophe. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right, so I'm yeah. like an A. Okay, so you guys are born in Glenwood. You moved to Carbondale, yeah. and you. How did you start this thing called Accomplice? Well. You know, since we've been young, we were always immersed in the kind of skateboard, snowboard, ski culture. And uh, something that, you know, really hit us early on was the fact that when I was, you know, 11, 12, skateboarding, 13, I could go to a skateboard store, which back then, believe it or not, was kind of a rare thing. Right, skateboard right, Skateboard right. stores were like, it was... It was like that BMR the in Glenwood. Yeah, what was that, d &E? I don't think you were even born yeah. yet. Anyway. Anyways, so, <laughs> anyways, the, the brand name you chose to wear and represent kind of deciphered somewhat of the tribe you belong to. So you'd be in an airport flying somewhere and you'd see another kid with a certain brand and you guys would link eyes and it's this kind of un, unwritten kind of like, we're in the same tribe, we run by similar ethics, we enjoy similar things. Because it was small enough, you knew anyone that knew had oh, to search awesome. it out and find it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So from an early age, we both always had this kind of like swagger this swagger of like you know belonging to the certain tribes and like the ideals and it was a way to actually unite people together like and so when we got older you know 14 15 16 17 we were still interested in like this idea of like having a clothing lifestyle brand so when um actually on my 18th birthday we we kind of announced the launch of accomplice and um, at the time when we launched it, it was more so just an idea. We didn't have a name yet, but it was that was the start of Accomplice. And how did you know how to design clothes? Like, what, what, who's the designer? Who does? Well, when he first came to me and he, we made music, he was like, I want to make some clothing that has a meaning and is cool. I was like, that's a horrible idea. You don't know how to design. You don't know the program. <gasps> you don't know anything about this. And so I was against the whole idea. And you were the younger brother. Younger so brother. you were like, I'll show you. Well, so we, we fought about it and we made music together. And I was like, if we're going to become uh, big at this, we have to stay focused. You right. know? Um, but he said, no, I'm going to do it anyways. I go, okay, whatever. You don't know the programs to do this. Well, he finds a guy in town, takes about four classes, designs a total of 12 designs. In Carbondale? Uh, oh, Paonia. Oh, pa oh yeah. Paonia, wow. Yeah, yeah, even smaller. Wow. And uh, his first 12 designs he ever made, we took nine of those, and that's season one of Accomplice. So he ends up being like a prodigy. So I was wrong. And did you know you had this in you your whole life? No, not at all. I was never really like the art kid. I played music. I did sports, I had a lot of fun, but I was never like, there was the art kids and then like, you know, the other kids. Right, right, right. I was right. never like the art kid, the the art art kid at all. But you guys were the guys that jumped off like cliffs. Yeah. yeah. Like you went. This, uh, this guy was like always the craziest dude throughout school, like and extreme sports. He did BMX bike riding. It took me, you know, four years to learn how to kickflip off a staircase and he bet me that over a weekend he could learn, and I bet and lost all this money, and it just pissed me off because he was just so athletic and 
just he had some so much balls to do but it. But that fearlessness has led to Absolutely. where you why Absolutely. where you are today and one yeah. of the reasons that you're sitting here today. Yeah, yeah. he would always like be you're like, not afraid of anything. Yeah, he'd be like, Patrick, Patrick, no, 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 we shouldn't do that. That's too much. I'd be like, No, let's just do it. What do you <laughs> what do you what do you, what's like your slogan, like fall out of the sky like you yeah, can give the finger it, in any way? We we just agree with Jay Z when he says, uh how people ask, you know, how like, did I get so fly be from not being scared to fall out the sky. And it just really means you got to go for it and take that chance and have that confidence to actually get there. It's the right. And you might fall, but you might not. And it's, it, the outcome is not what we're living for. The outcome is eventually death. What we're living for <laughs> is the experiences. Exactly. So there's no reason to ever hold yourself back because ultimately that's what life is. It's going for what you believe in and it's going for what you desire. If you see a girl at a Starbucks or a guy in your case, you got to go for it, you know, like you have to at least open that engagement exactly. if you feel passionate about it. No, it's true. So it's a whole, a whole, well, that'll be another she's getting, show. She's lit up. She's got a new boyfriend Happy if anybody's in there. Happy New Year to my new boyfriend. Anyway. Um, Lynn's taken. <laughs> Don't holler at my girl. All right, but back to Jay-Z for this a second. This is the guy she met at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but long story short, well, a whole other show of chance meetings of people. So um, speaking of hip-hop Right, Jay Z's a hip hop artist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of hip hop artists, though, you—I mean, people like huge people, um, Snoop Dogg, right? He—he's worn your clothes on ESPN. Ray Kwan of Wu Tan. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. <laughs> Cash rules everything. Cash rules right everything. There on the oh. screen, you can see What's Snoop Dogg uh, with the Baltimore Ravens there, wearing our Freedom T-shirt. Yeah, so that was cool. That was featured on ESPN. That's amazing. And right now, you've teamed up with Vernon Davis. This is really yeah. absolutely remarkable, and there's so much so to So I'll show up. you this little T-shirt here. We got this, the Vernon Davis bad boy here. So we teamed up. You can see some photos. There's Vernon rocking it. We teamed up with Vernon Davis. He's San Francisco 49ers, tight end, pro bowl. And if you watch the last game against the Saints, he made the last-minute touchdown that won them the game and he came off the field crying uh so emotional about it and just amazing guy he's a, a artist and most people when they think football players they don't think an artist and so if you look at that basically what we did when we made this shirt with him it was really important that we gave back to the community something we believe in he believes in too so 50 percent of all white t-shirt sales go to uh, the youth art program, Young Audience, helping impoverished kids have access to the arts um, since public funding for arts is being cut across the country like crazy. Then if you buy the black shirt that you see there, a kid in Africa receives a shirt, a kid that's in need. So and it's really cool. Which, is, which also links who's bringing the shirts to... Um, yeah, Starkey. Um, which is a hearing... Yeah, um, and so they're doing a hear, uh, mission over there, and so they'll distribute the shirts for us. And... Uh, it's really cool because we gave the consumer the power to choose what uh, cause they wanted to be part of, or you can go for both. And so it's really cool to see an athlete that's an artist take the time out to do these type of things with their busy schedule. Right, right. And um, I, my actually, my New Year's resolution was not to brag about myself mm -hmm. um, on my show, but I am a Colorado artist in residence, which is part of nice. the Young Audiences. So nice. um, I will post that on um, the Young Audiences three. 360 website. That's awesome. So cool. you're like, so much is going on, and where do, you can buy these T-shirts online at complex.com, but you can also go to boutiques in San Francisco, New Orleans. Yeah, we kept this release. Santa Barbara is very exclusive, and so what we did with the release is we made it so you could get it in San Francisco, Cali at our flagship store in Santa Barbara, uh, crossover in Las Vegas, amazing store. And so it's kind of, you gotta, you got to look for it, or you can go online and get it at a couple of retailers there as well. Okay, I have two questions that we can't leave without me asking. Yes. So what does, because you just, what does, like you said when you were in the, in the um, airports and you would see somebody with some gear, like what does accomplice mean? Like if you see somebody wearing an accomplice, like what does that mean? Well, when you make that eye contact should with somebody. I, should I, uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay, well today is a new age, and the old age of, the niche categories, which is basically uh, insecurity. You know, people are, I'm green, I'm a jock, I'm a socialite. And everyone has these categories that basically lets their ego and their self-esteem rest and go, okay, that's who I am. And they don't like to go into other categories. And so, because that threatens the idea of, are they real, are they that? What accomplice stands for is, we enjoy life. 
So I hang out with football players. I hang out with rappers. I'm an environmentalist. Skateboarders. I love I, a skateboarder. I eat organic food. I'm like, have hippie ideals. I'm all of that mixed together. And that's the next thing is you have to be confident enough to enjoy all of life. And that's how we're going to unite because right now we're so fractioned apart to sell products because it's easy mm. to sell a product right. if you're a goth or you're a jock, then you know what you need to look like and you right. know the uniform. And so what Accomplice is, it's for people that are intelligent and confident and enjoy life and like to step in many categories because we've done projects with Fred Siegel, uh, we've done projects with MF Doom, we've done projects for uh, Africa Pump Aid, a lot of different stuff. So we're right. across the board. Skateboard, right. we got a huge collab with a huge skateboard company. And coming. you got you got something really big because I heard that you've recently hooked so up with MF Doom and there's mystery in this box. So talk yes. to me. Well, MF Doom changed his name to Doom, which okay. is uh, crazy. But what we did with this box here, we did 24 hours only, wood crate. No one knows what's in the wood crate. Sealed, nailed shut, you get a crowbar with it, our logo, Doom's logo, $50. We think we're going to sell like 50. We end up selling 540 of these boxes in 24 hours for the release date. No one knows what's in the box. GQ features this on their site among millions of others. It goes viral. People are like going crazy. Then inside the box, there was a pocket watch, which people went crazy. It has our logos inside there and on the outside. People love that. And then if you go to the next photo, there was a T-shirt. Uh, that came with it also, a postcard, and then you got a cassette tape of an unreleased track of Ghostface of Wu-Tang and Doom, and people went crazy for this. Wow. And then to top it off, there was a map, and on the map led to a real buried treasure, and it was a trivia, and kids end up flying around the country to find this treasure. One kid got to where the treasure was buried. It had been dug up. No! On Twitter, people are going crazy, going, give this dude the treasure. Well, the treasure is gone. I can't give him the treasure, but we end up sending him a box, and Doom hooked him up with some tickets to some concerts and stuff. But just a wild project that had everyone going crazy. Whoa! Yeah. I also want to just throw in uh, another project we did, which was we raised money to actually build a water pump in um, a community in Africa. And actually got the pump in there, so now the women and the girls With that who product. traditionally um, had to walk for six hours a day carrying water back and forth, which is actually you know polluted water in a lot there's of cases, the picture of the oh, kids, there's the water pump right can there. actually get education, they get clean water, it's right there, and it's more of a sustainable community, letting communities that are worrying about purely surviving actually come up and, and worry about things like evolving and education business. and business and kind of like growing the world. So that's another um, that's another project we just finished with this year that we're really proud of as well. So we're we about out of time. We're about out of time. Go to Fred Siegel in Santa Monica, pick up the stuff, go to Casual Culture in Carbonale, go to Radio Board Shop. Go to Accomplice. Go to accomplice-clothing.com. And, and, and Fred Siegel, because we have like fresh. 30 seconds, because nobody does what you did at Fred Siegel. Like, yeah. Fred Siegel, you have a marriage with Fred Siegel. Like, it's one thing to have your clothes there, but it's another thing to have them stamp your... We did yeah. a collaboration co-branded product uh, that was very cool called The Paint Project. Look it up. I know we're out of time. There's so much to talk about. It's all about the prevention of global warming. Um, and, um, yeah, it's a, whole, it's a whole concept, so definitely look into that piece really powerful. Well, you guys, we promise next time you're in town, you'll just come and be on my show. And well, let's just come hang, talk out. To me. hang out. Let's come see. over for dinner. Let's yay. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Thank you so much.